It's time for the Equity Equals Freedom podcast on WOBL. And now, here's your host, Rick Rucker. That's right, folks. Live from WOBL. Uh, first time I've been back in a uh, radio station in probably the better part of a decade. I actually used to DJ in a former life, and now I actually do uh, real estate uh, so equity equal freedom, the whole premise of it is to discuss um, all things capitalism and business and how that ties into obviously real estate, which is what we all do. Um, I like my uh, Top Gun uh, <laughs> headset going on here, uh, but I do have to read a uh, disclaimer myself as well because I'm in mortgages, of course. The primary purpose of this radio show is to inform, entertain, and educate. Sounds a little bit like what we just played, but whatever. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented during the radio show do not constitute legal or other professional advice, opinion, or endorsements of any kind. Equity Mortgage Group is a division of Gold Star Mortgage Financial Corporation, NMLS number 3446, equal housing lender. Gold Star corporate address is 100 Phoenix Drive, Suite 300, Ann Arbor, Michigan, 4810. 48108, excuse me. Okay, so now we got that out of the way. Uh, the main objective, again, is to introduce uh, some of my friends in the real estate realm and help some of you folks actually start building wealth through real estate. So my uh, Jenny 2 co-host, which is <laughs> j just a joke, Jenny's running a little bit late, but my good friend Aaron Thomas is currently in the building. I guess we can do some fake applause. Hey, yeah. there we go. Uh, and my good friend, uh, Kaz as well is in the building, but I'll probably just start with, um, uh, yeah, just, woo, here we go. <laughs> We're going to get the sound effects together by show number two. Okay. Uh, so first up, Aaron, uh, if you could just it, really introduce yourself and tell the folks here at, uh, WOBL what exactly you do in real estate and what got you into it. Sure. So I am a, I like to call myself an investor agent and I specialize in commercial multifamily. I'm part of the easy sales team and proud to say I'm a top five agent on the number one team in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. And um, being part of KW Commercial, I specialize in those multifamilies and I love selling apartments. It's honestly what I've always been really good at. So um, and I'm, now I'm proud to say that I'm part of Investor Source with you great people. All right. Investor Source CLE. And when you first started in real estate, I mean, what really drew you into the industry? So I, my husband actually wanted to invest in real estate. So I took a job doing social media and marketing actually for a wholesaling brokerage where I basically immediately got moved into a sales position because they recognized that my talents were being wasted. So I um, started as a wholesaler. I basically immediately got licensed and within that first year went on to sell 49 homes. Gotcha. And why is wholesaling such a hot button question? Like what's the difference between wholesaling versus a normal brokerage? So wholesaling is basically you're going to a seller and you're signing up the deal on a purchase agreement. But instead of just closing on the deal like you would a normal sale, you're selling that contract to somebody else for a profit. So there's gotcha. a difference in price points and you're making that commission in the middle. And I think the hot button item, and I'm a whole, or I'm sorry, I'm an agent, a realtor. I started as a wholesaler, so I see the benefit of both. Right. But um, I think a lot of realtors who aren't familiar with it are uncomfortable with the fact that these people don't need a real estate license and can come in and basically sell real estate. Um, there's pros and cons, and I think wholesaling works well for some sellers, and it's not right for other sellers. So ultimately, it just depends on what's going on, and having someone knowledgeable in all aspects of that I think is important. Right, and you brought up a really good point. So what's the difference between having a real estate agent that kind of just does normal first-time homebuyer stuff versus actually have an agent that understands investors? Because those are two completely separate fields. Oh, my God, I love this question. So what a lot of people don't know is in realtor school, you're really not taught how to be a realtor at all. You're not taught. <laughs> I mean, you're not. Mortgage school. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you're not taught what contract, like pieces of the contracts have to go together. You're just not taught any of those things. So you're definitely not taught investments. It's almost like how you're not taught anything about taxes in school. Yes. It's, it's the same thing. I, I'm, a, I'm a realtor, but I'm not taught anything about selling investment property. 
So most agents don't know how to run a rate of a return or how to calculate or create a pro forma. They're just not familiar with those aspects. So while they could sell a house and price out the house accordingly, they might not know how to, you know, analyze what the rents look like and how to create that pro forma for what it could be doing based on that income and how to analyze a cap rate and run the profit and loss sheets. None of that is taught. So it's really important for you as, an, for me as an investor agent and for those people who are buying to connect themselves with somebody who is knowledgeable in that, who's gone the extra length and taken the extra education courses and has the experience in selling those investment properties. Right. And you kind of bring up a really good point. So um, what Aaron really said is the truth, not only about um, realtors, but as well as mortgage professionals, a lot of people just... Um, don't know the answers or they just really weren't brought into the business and taught properly. So I tell my people, even north of 6,500 transactions being in the business since 2005, there's still questions that I'm always asking. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of agents are, you know, if, if there's something that they're not comfortable with, then they just kind of like, you know, they're a little guarded, whatever. And the same thing happens in the mortgage arena. Like when I first started trying to train my people on what's DSCR, what's cash flow, what's an asset, you know, what's asset-based lending, um, you know, how does multifamily structuring work, all that stuff. I mean, those guys were like deer in headlights. And for the first three years, I didn't even let them talk about really investment stuff until they started getting their beak wet on the conventional side. But the biggest thing that um, I think that a lot of people aren't aware of is wealth in this country is held in real estate. And one of the reasons why we created an investor source CLE as a group was to start, you know, really educating not just season investors. So, you know, Aaron, for instance, is talking about a lot of multifamily stuff. You know, that's probably more for like a season investor, but somebody that's first getting into the business, they really need to know how do I get into a one to four unit, you know, mm -hmm. with, you know, and I hate to say um, low to no money out of pocket because the biggest thing we hear from a lot of these real estate gurus is them kind of teaching people like not having equity in the project. And one thing that we're against when it comes to that is, you know, when it comes to the recessionary market is we know that values tend to go down in the recessionary market. So we really try to teach people to have skin in the game. So, um, but again, our focus is to not just um, we can take a very novice investor in real estate, coach them up and get them into 5, 10, 20 units like I've done myself, Aaron's done herself. I'm sure Kaz and Jenny as well have worked with like different levels or whatever. Um, and uh, the other thing I wanted to ask is what is your specific value add um, to your investor clients? I know some of the stuff you mentioned obviously is you know, you'll do the financials and you'll help them walk through that. But like, what really is your value add as opposed to the other, you know, real estate investor, you know, realtors? Right. Well, I like to say as an investor agent, which is, a, you know, a little bit different than being a residential agent, is Very that much. your value really is held in your network. Right. So I can have investors from all over the U.S. calling me and if I don't have that network for them, the good property managers, the good contractors, the plumbers, the resource for everything that might come up, there's not a huge value that I'm providing them. They can go to any other agent and have an MLS list drawn up and get their property searches sent to them. I need to have those connections with the wholesalers for the off-market properties. I need to have those connections with the plumbers and the inspectors and the property management to make sure that they're getting the best deals possible and maximizing the returns they can get on those investments. I also need to know how to talk to investors at a higher level. I just today spent an hour and a half making lead gen calls, calling all of the properties around a seven-unit apartment I have listing that I have coming up to say, hey, I know buyers buying collections and, you know, this one's about to go up. Are you looking to sell as well? You know, or just give me some data. I love to just collect data on all the other properties. What are you getting in rents? What does that look like? And if you don't know how to do that at a high level, the only thing you're providing them is an MLS list. Right. And they can get that from anybody. Yes. And that, you know, again, Aaron touches on a lot of points. Like you really need to have an agent that understands how to leverage their network. And I feel like, excuse me, a lot of traditional, excuse me, realtors, um, specifically, again, they kind of have their guard up when it comes to wholesalers. But like you said, you're talking to everybody. And I'm kind of the same way when it comes to mortgages. Even when I wasn't heavily entrenched in the um, investment 
um, you know, the DSCR stuff mm -hmm. and all that, I still was really entrenched with investors because, again, like, I can't speak at a PhD level in real estate without knowing people from all walks of life. So I'm glad you really touched on that. Um, and uh, this, is, this is a deep question here. Yeah. What made you get involved in an investor source CLE and all the pandemonium that it entailed? <laughs> well, Wayne asked me to, so. <laughs> Shout out to Wayne. He couldn't make it today. No, like I just loved the idea of it. Uh, Rick, you sat on a panel once at a networking event, and it sticks out so vividly in my mind because it was just such a successful event that instead of the typical someone's getting up and preaching a story, you guys were th from three different walks of life, a lender, uh, actual investor, and there was somebody else, um, but all answering the same questions in your own way and how it applies to you. And it was just really powerful to the audience. So when you guys came to me and were talking about this and you know interested in doing it in a similar way, I just, I love that. And for me, like this year especially, I am so passionate and so motivated to help more agents, especially more female agents, feel confident working with investors and investing in themselves, like investing in property themselves. So when you guys came to me, it was kind of like, you know, the stars aligned, timing was just perfect. This year, my goal is to give back and add as much value as I can. I just finished my first CE class, thanks to Kaz, mm -hmm. um, teaching agents how to work with investors because like we said, it's not something you're taught. And I just, I'm here to give back value as much as I can. I love multifamily and I love to help other people grow in multifamily. Even if you love single family, I can still help you there. But my passion and what I, my value that I really add to this group, I think is the multifamily expertise. But I just, I appreciate everybody that's in this group. And I don't think I would have done or would have made sense for me to say no. Yeah. And um, to, you know, to touch on Aaron's point and a part of really, I think, the fluidity that comes with our group is, you know, I'm I'm a minority man in a space where you obviously don't see a lot of minorities. The focus of Equity CMG is specifically minorities, women, investors, and millennial and Gen Zers. And that is our target market. That's who we kind of go after. And honestly, if you look at all the data over the last 24 months, those are the people that are buying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the younger generation are buying in abundance, the female-led um, uh, household are up almost, you know, two times what it was in the 90s. Um, minority investing um, and actually minority um, values have gone up more than, you know, uh, their counterparts or whatever. So again, the market is moving more towards, um, you know, those those specific targeted groups. And I feel like with Investor Source CLE, we make it very personable. Um, you know, our original idea was almost like an unsung, uh, like, you know, I pictured Nirvana, you know, Kurt Cobain mm -hmm. playing the guitar by himself sitting right. on a stool. That was like some of the ideas we were coming up with because we wanted a very personal experience so people of all different arenas can really come to the event. Exactly. And their voices can be heard, too. In the panel style, we, you know, take questions, ask your questions, which is really, really cool. Yeah. So... All right, next up is my good friend, Kaz. Kaz in the building. Um, and we'll pull a, a swap out of uh, Jenny 1 and 2. No, we, we called Aaron uh, Jenny 2. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just joking. You guys on the radio before I came. <laughs> uh, so up next is my good friend, Kaz. She is actually um, the, the, the young lady behind so many different things. Uh, the first time I sat down with Kaz, and she really like expressed all the stuff she was into. I was like, wow, that is a lot of different business arenas, but they all kind of, you know, flow together. So uh, first up, you can obviously introduce yourself, Kaz, and kind of explain to the people exactly what you got going on. Sure. Um, so my name is Kaz, um, and um, it's sometimes, you know, I, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, who am I today? What am I doing? <laughs> um, Entrepreneurs understand that too. Yeah. <laughs> and even sometimes I'm like, I'm talking to Jenny. I'm like, okay, who am I talking like to right now? Is, you know, is it Icon Cowork or is it an agent on my team? So it's, it's slightly confusing. But uh, yeah, so um, I am a real estate agent um, at uh, EXP Realty. 
I'm also a team lead. Um, my partner, uh, Andrea Timko, and I started the team last May. Um, I'm also uh, uh, the owner or co-owner of Icon Cowork and HR director for a chain of bars called Two Box and a partner. So, okay. do, you, do you need anything else to do <laughs> to put on that plate there? Or? need to slow down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm part of Investor Source, so there yeah. you go. <laughs> yes, and uh, hopefully in Investor Source kind of helps put all the pieces together because the biggest thing that we all kind of preach to each other is how do we help build value for one another and the the most impressive part like i said about kaz again she just her resume obviously speaks for itself but to do that many different businesses and be successful in it it's hard for a lot of people uh -huh. to do so and it probably takes a lot of caffeine maybe some boxing <laughs> in the morning time a little workout blah 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 um so you started a, a female-led team again everything that um equity equals freedom stands about for um what got you into being an entrepreneur I think I just kind of like got forced into it uh, and it started many years ago when I graduated from um, CSU. I almost got it a full-time position and then I met my partner in life and crime and in everything, Eric, and he's like, no, 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 you're not going anywhere. Like stick with us. And that just kind of like how it, it's, it started. And now I can't even imagine working for <laughs> for someone you know i wake up every day and i go for a run i go to the gym and i'm like oh bingo i have another idea and you know if you work for someone how are you going to implement it you know when you work for yourself you surround yourself with like-minded people and you just they keep you going and you're like oh i like that idea let's you know let's do this and that with that so it just it kind of like happened right mm -hmm. so um obviously you know you you, you have an accent were, were you originally were you born overseas like go through that whole story on like you know barriers to entry and one of my mentors dan milstein who actually uh founded gold star he's actually a uh ukrainian immigrant but he was a political refugee so um really sh you know strong russian accent and really like i said dear friend of mine but take us through you know maybe some of the barriers to entry that you went through coming from different cultures i know with dan in his books um, street, Mart, street Smart Selling is a great book. I advise everybody to grab it. But a lot of stuff that he mentioned is some of the barriers to entry that he ran through when he was coming from a different culture, which is also, you know, my family came from Ireland. They didn't really like the Irish when we first came here. When we had, when they heard an Irish yeah. accent, they were like, oh, we hate. And now all of a sudden, everybody, you know, everybody, St. Patrick's Day this week, everybody Love thinks Irish. Irish people are great. But <laughs> when we first got here, it was really not that fun. So take us through some of the maybe barriers to entry that you ran through in entrepreneurship when you're coming out of a, you know, from a different culture? Well, my story was fun. I actually, um, I came here 20 years ago and I was supposed to stay here for three months. Yeah. Um, but in, in Russia, it was very difficult to, as a student, to find a job. Like at that point, there was no such thing as like, hey, you walk into a bar or restaurant, you apply and you get hired. So it was very difficult. Here, I just started working a lot. I mean, I was cleaning everything I could see in front of me, um, from targets at night to giant eagles to home, uh, homes uh, during the day. And then I was a waitress on the weekends. So it's just like this, this Work cycle. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> and that's just kind of like how it started. I'm like, oh my God, there's so much opportunity here in, in, in America. And so I just kept working and I kept staying and staying and staying and staying. And, you know, 20 years later, I, um, I'm a citizen um, and uh, it's, it, it's just it's a different um, it's a different mindset here. You know when they talk about American dream, I mean it really is truly, truly alive. American yes, dream, yeah. absolutely. You can do anything here. Yeah, anything. Yeah, and again, the reason why I wanted you to tell that story is because it, it just uh, another passion of mine is really working with folks that come from overseas. Because you know my grandfather came here, left my uh, grandmother, my uncle, and my mother overseas in England. Um, God forgive me, I know I'm Irish, but you know, <laughs> during the time there was not some great things happening in Ireland, so my grandparents went over to England. My grandfather left them there, came through to Canada, sold ice cream on the back of his bike to get the family over, stay with my uncle Leo. Uh, if you know any hills or foley's, I'm probably related to them, but he stayed with them you know, built everything out of just, you know, family and just the work ethic 
and American capitalism. Again, the reason why I came up with uh, Equity Equals Freedom was to talk about these type of stories that are, you know, the, the test of um, American capitalism and how it can work to your advantage no matter what your background mm -hmm. is because we all come from wildly different backgrounds. I can't wait now that I have Jenny here to tell her <laughs> story as well. Um, but again... I like everybody kind of telling, you know, exactly where they came from so we can explain to, you know, everybody like we've come from all different walks of life and we really have embraced uh, real estate in um, capitalism. So now tell us a little bit more about your realtor team and what's your value proposition versus like somebody and I trust me, we see varying different levels as a mortgage lender. Hey, sometimes I step back and I'm like, hey, it may not be a good fit for you um, because I believe on hands on coaching and I feel like Kaz's idea is pretty similar to mine. But what's your value proposition when it comes to attracting agents to your team? Well, I think it all starts first with EXP, right? Uh, it's just, if, and there are different, if you ask a different EXP region, I mean, they will have their own different teams from, uh, reasons, I'm sorry, from uh, great commission splits to low, um, <coughs> low monthly fees uh, from multiple streams of income. Like there's just so many reasons. For me, it was more like, a, and still to this day is collaboration. I mean, uh, it's the other day I posted um, a couple of questions on uh, EXP commercial workplace and it was phenomenal the amount of feedback that I received and people called and one guy spent 45 minutes with me on Zoom meeting and he knew that he's not recruiting me. I'm not gonna join his team uh, because I'm from a different state, but it's just like that mindset of collaboration. So it's just, it all starts with, with EXP. And um, when Andrea and I got together, um, we decided that we want to create a team, but it, it has to be different, not like any other team. And what we created is that we have three different uh, commissions placed on our team. Okay. So we want to meet agents wherever they're at in their business, mm -hmm. right? So the first commission split is for an agent who, let's say you just got licensed and you have no idea what you're doing, right? Yes. So we literally were going to hold your hand from uh, professional photography, staging, pictures, um, uh, business cards, uh, transaction coordination, listing inputs, uh, um, lead generation, everything, right? right? So that's the first split. Then we have something in the middle. It's for agents who, are, who know what they're doing. Um, they don't need as much support, but they still need support. Again, listing uh, input, TC, a lot of things. And then the third, um, is the third level is icon partner okay. so that's for uh, agents who typically don't need a team yeah. they just want to be on the team they want that collaboration they want that team support a uh, little bit of um, transaction coordination listing input maybe office and things like that so it's just uh it for me personally i've never seen a team that offers so many layers no. of, yeah so yeah. that's kind of like what we uh what we're doing and right now our main focus so when we started i don't remember how many agents we had right now i think we're at about 12 agents okay so we're still still growing um but we're focusing on uh, um, training, uh, heavy, heavy training. So we do uh, at least two trainings a week. Uh, so actually today at 6.30, I have a, <laughs> I have a meeting with the team. You busy? Yeah. No, we're not busy. <laughs> not <imagine. Yeah. laughs> and then tomorrow morning, another one. And then we do in-person trainings. And um, definitely uh, put in a lot of uh, input on or effort into lead generation. So that's kind of like two main goals right now, training and lead generation for our agents. Gotcha. And uh, the one thing I will attest to what Kaz is saying, and even, you know, in interviewing, I mean, some of the loan officers, because there's a lot of shakeout happening in the mortgage arena right now, a lot of people just aren't aware of what should be and what shouldn't be. And if somebody is doing a lot more for you, then obviously there's going to be different, you know, tiers or whatever. Um, and like I said, bar none, I, I believe between, you know, Kaz's team and what I've seen with Aaron's team as well, um, is they do offer that support system because as an agent, if you're just out there, I mean, God forbid, I mean, you know, we, we had a great event today at the office with, uh, gentleman named Rene Rodriguez, uh, bestseller, uh, sales coach. And one of the things he was saying was, you know, the media gets paid on hysteria and the hysteria they're creating about real estate market is you'd think that the world was ending. Mm -hmm. We all know that that is not happening. You know, was 2022 a year of, I don't want to say 
difficult but different. Yes, it was a different environment we were in, but if you pivot and shift and you have the support like you're talking about with your team, then it's not a big deal to pivot and shift around, you know, the how the industry's moving and all that good stuff. So I really I, I can't speak enough to what Kaz is saying. Like if you're out there interviewing um even if you don't go to kaz's team or you know you don't want to work with you know aaron's team whatever make sure that you're asking the questions when it comes to respect to you know what type of support you're going to get because a lot of these places will just kind of you know throw you out into the throw you out to the wolves and then um let you, you know sink or swim not that i disagree with real estate being that way but sometimes you do need that coaching For sure. so uh, and I'm going to impose the, the, the million-dollar question. What made you get into Investor Source CLE, and mm. why do you want to deal with us every month? <laughs> you know how <laughs> how uh, Aaron was talking about giving back? Uh, for me, it's 100% selfish reasons. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to pretend. <laughs> so first of all... That's why I, I do it. Right. <laughs> uh, first of all, Icon Cowork was created as a, as a culture hub. Yeah. So as a real estate culture hub. hub. So what I love seeing is uh, when we have investor source um, events, you know, you see agents, you see wholesalers, you see um, lenders, you see inspectors, you see every part of the real estate industry. And right. that's exactly what I wanted to be there. That's my dream come true. Come true. Like literally every event I'm standing there and I'm just like soaking it all in. Like I love it. Yeah. And um, self, second selfish reason is I, I'm learning, right? Yes. I'm learning from all of you guys, whether it's about uh, lending or investing or especially from Aaron about multifamily, how to deal with investors and how to analyze deals so for me it's it's all of it yeah mm -hmm. and I, I think uh you know some of the points that you touched on really you know the end goal of this obviously is there's some self-interest there of course we want some business to come out of it and mm -hmm. for us to learn etc cetera, etc cetera. but one thing jenny said in one of our um, if you ever want to be entertained and you come in on a Friday and you just look at us in that back room, I just, I could feel, I feel like the energy just permeates out. Um, but with, with the investor source CLE, when we meet together, there's a lot of energy balled up in one room. And sometimes those meetings go for three or four hours. And honestly, it's like basic stuff. But one thing that Jenny said to me that really stuck out to me, and it's stuff that we take for granted, is she said within five or six times of sitting with us, she always feel, she already feels like she's at PhD level. And uh -huh. me, personally, I just think, hey, this is how I talk. You know, this is no big deal. I'm sure Isaac feels the same way. But, you know, this is what we do every day. But we don't realize sometimes, like, and Aaron as well, we don't realize that how much experience and everything that we've learned, um, you know, I guess, like, to the normal person, like, how interesting that is. So, Investor Source CLE is every first Thursday of the month. I've messed that up a couple times. Aaron's messed it a couple times. Week we, yeah, we say. <laughs> and then every week following. Yeah, and there yeah. we Just say once weekly. A month. <laughs> yeah, it's only once a month. We can only deal with each other once four a month. Six, four to six. Four to six. Okay, so... More like four to ten. Oh, yeah. Four yeah. to really, like, until we have to kick everybody out of Icon co yeah. And That's part of that, really. you know, you, 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 you know, you guys brought in a DJ who's a world-famous DJ. No. Nobody wants to leave. It's a vibe. Yeah. It, is, you know? it is a vibe. Everybody's there. We're networking. It's a great time. People don't want to leave, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, except for me and Kaz want to go home at some point. Yes. <laughs> and these ladies put in a lot of work behind the scenes. So, next up is actually my co-host who got stuck in traffic and was listening to us, apparently. I was. It was great. At least I'm not as late as Isaac, co-host or not. <laughs> uh, Jenny, Jenny, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell the folks out there exactly, you know, your piece of the puzzle and yeah. all that good stuff. So I'm Jenny Gennaro. Um, I do a lot of things also, I guess. Um, I help run Icon Cowork for Kaz, also a real estate agent for EXP um, on Iconic Partners. I do staging on the side um, as a little side business that I do and absolutely love. I think that's more my niche, um, actually. I help with Investor Source CLE. Mm -hmm. I do. Um, and I spent the last 10 years in government work and in, in local government business development. So it's really segued a lot more than I thought it would to into real estate. Um, but was an agent. I've had my license for almost four years. I can't believe it's been that long. Um, 
And uh, Andrea Timko, who's a team lead for Iconic Partners, reached out to me and said, hey, I think you should quit your government job and jump into real estate real estate full time. And I was like, wait, That's what? Quite the jump. I know. <laughs> like, hold on a second. She just said she thought it would be a really good fit. Um, her and Kaz were starting the team. Icon Cowork was was about to be, was being built, actually. Um, so I'm like, all right, let me meet Kaz. So went in, met Kaz. Long story short, it was like love at first sight. Um, fell in love with Icon, fell in love with Kaz. Just her business model, the way she is as a person, her drive, her energy, everything was just such a good fit. So it put me in a position where I could jump into real estate full time, which is a major passion for myself, and then also help run Icon and get the business started. Um, and it just it was just meant to be. So I burned the boats. I quit my full time government job, which I loved. It was a great job, but it wasn't going to get me where I wanted to be. Now, what do you think uh, the biggest maybe struggles as an as a as an agent that came out of government and hopped right into real estate what do you think were like some of the biggest struggles that you had to overcome um, so my government job was sales and, and like I said, business development, local politics. So I, I just knew different lingo, you know, like the verbiage was different. I didn't know, like, like Aaron taught me cap rate, like, you know, the last couple, I think, sessions That's of me good. meeting with her. Controversial. And well, yeah, I'm like, wait, what? It's this, it's not, you know, and so, I mean, and, and like, like you said, like the first couple of times sitting in these investor sorts meetings, you guys are throwing out acronyms and my acronyms for government work are completely different. And so I'm like, wait, right, ULA and OMG, that's not the same as like, you know, like what you guys are saying. So I think it was really just getting to learn. Um, I'm not in politics anymore. I can kind of just be who I need to be, you know, not to fake it. I don't have to be somebody else. I can be who I am and the people around me are either going to accept it or they're not. And you find, you kind of find your tribe and I've done that. And that's to Kaz's point for EXP, why it's such a good fit for me. A hundred percent culture, hundred percent. Like I don't ever feel like I'm fighting somebody for like, uh, you know, in the real estate world, which a lot of agents, I think they, they feel that way. Yes. And I'm glad that you touched on that because the same thing unfortunately happens with with some of the loan officers. The funny part is, you know, I know Ron over at Cross Country. I know Bill and Jeremy at Nations Lending. I know Hesh over there at Liberty Mortgage. Like, a lot of us that have been in the business for longer than five years all know each sure. other. But on the bottom level, for some reason, some loan officers, some people in business development think it's a doggy dog world. And it's like, it's really not because there's certain things that I won't do as a lender that I could send to other lenders, right. you know, and that's, I think, realtors that realize that, you know, whether you're on the listing side or the buyer side, you, you know, especially if things go awry, because trust me, we always, as the person that's financing everything, when problems happen, if there's a listing agent that's a maniac or there's a buyer's agent that's a maniac, it just makes things so much harder versus everybody just saying, let's sit down, let's come with a resolution. Now, of course, we know that our clients sometimes are maniacs too, mm -hmm. you know, with all due respect, you know, to the public, of course, like some people, to their credit, it's a very stressful buy. You know, a lot of these people have never, you know, bought something of this caliber. It's a it's it's a, a emotional buy for them. So we have to navigate around some of the insanity in the market. But the last thing we want to do as professionals is really beat each other up, especially if there's something going awry, which is a lot of times is like a quick fix. Well, it's already a hard business. Right. You know, like it's not an easy business. They're right. It's it's one of the biggest purchase anybody will ever make in their entire life, right? right? And so it is emotional and it is personal. And so for us, you know, as agents, it's it's kind of the same. Like you're involved in those emotions and it's our job to just to, to do what's best for our client every time. And I feel like with EXP, the reason I joined was just, it was culture. It was being surrounded by people and knowing that no matter what I needed, I could call someone who is on the team or not on the team, just a part of EXP, get an answer, get help, get coaching. And I mean, I don't I don't know where else you could find that. So for me, it was just a really good fit. Yeah. And for those, for those that don't know, um, the, the kind of me and Isaac kind of sat down originally and we were like, uh, you know, what are we going to do with this? Because Isaac was already kind of doing an event um, that was wholesaler specific. We did quarterly events at my office for, you know, bringing in lenders and investors, et cetera, et cetera. So when Isaac and I first sat down, we were like, well, what does this look like? And then we brought in Wayne and then Wayne brought us to Kaz and then Aaron was in and then Jenny was in. But Jenny 
to her credit, sat in the middle of this room in the midst of pandemonium <laughs> and somehow was able to just refine it and make it so that out of all this chaos, she was like, okay, you do this, you do this, you do this, which it's hard for, it's a little less hard for me because I know how to, as a leader, to take a back roll because all, all good leaders know that there's somebody that's going to be above them. Like, I follow what Dan Milstein tells me, blah, blah, blah. Jenny had to come in and tell us, you guys shut up and this is what we're going to do. Or like, you do this, you do this, you do this. But 4'11", 100 pounds, and I'm telling you. 4'11", 100, <laughs> yeah. And you know, I'm like, all right, enough. I mean, and, and you're right, like, there, you, you all have such a strong personality, and so do I, but to be in a room with all of you, knowing, like, how great you guys are in the business, and I'm, like, really just learning the investment side of real estate. Like, I was in awe of all of you, of Kaz running her own business, of you, what you're doing, you know, in the, in the mortgage industry, of... Um, um, Wayne killing it and just in, in everything that he's doing. Aaron came in like a powerhouse, and I'm like, who is this chick? You know, came and in then like a wrecking ball. And that, right, yeah, <laughs> wrecking Miley ball. Miley Cyrus, like she literally <laughs> flew in like Miley Cyrus with a wrecking ball. And, and then Isaac, like all these off market deals, and I'm sitting here like, wait, wait, we can do that? Like you can do that? You can't really do that. And I just sat in this room like taking all of you in, and then you're all going at it. And I'm like, okay, wait, <laughs> if this is gonna work, we need to like figure it out so it was just nice for me to be able to come in and you know single mama three like that's what you kind of do at the dinner table sometimes and then i mean i came from supervision so it was nice but um i just was in all of all of you so to make sure that i wanted it to work like it was like no option for me at that point like i'm like i hear what's happening i saw it i saw the vision and i'm like we're gonna make this work and man so far it's working it, it, it so far is working. Nobody has uh, killed each other, thankfully. Uh, no. That's a joke, by the way. We all love each other. So um, much love. <laughs> it's much love. <laughs> uh, so, uh, again, equity equals freedom. Uh, we're actually streaming on all platforms for those that don't know. We're on Apple, uh, Amazon, um, Spotify, all the, that good stuff. But the focus of equity equals freedom, again, is to spotlight women and minorities in business specifically and how they created something from A to Z. And when I started talking to Jenny, she just checked off so many boxes. I was like, God, you're just checking off every box of what we stand for. So, um, but your family is originally Peruvian. Yes, my mom is born and raised in Peru. Yeah, that so. is quite the trek there. It was quite the trek, yeah. Her story is um, similar to Kaz's. She came when she was early teens, came over, thought she was staying for a wedding. Family, Her family decided that it was just a better better place yeah. for her to be, a better yeah, life, I think, for her. <laughs> was, yeah, was here. So similar, but she didn't really have much of a choice. It was kind of uh, put, there, put out there for her. So she stayed. She's, you know, fluent in Spanish. She yells at the dog in Spanish. She yells at the kids in Spanish. You know, sometimes we act like we don't know what she's saying, but <laughs> most of the time we do. Um, so it, it's definitely been different, you know. I mean, I, my father is from here, but a, a police officer. So, like, being raised in a Hispanic mother and a police officer of a father has been great. Now, you guys know why I am the way I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it explains the structure and how you yell at me at 6'5", right. yes. you know, form of football attack. Right. I'm not afraid of you. Yeah, not even close. <laughs> This one's a she, she, she's she'll crack the whip on me, no problem. Yeah, so there's a feistiness of the Spanish side of me, but yeah, I mean it's been great. So obviously have the the minority piece too, my my background. Yeah, and one thing that um, uh, Jenny touched on that I, also hits home for me. So my grand my great grandfather over in Dublin was uh, 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 one of the first cops to actually be married, if I'm not mistaken, because they didn't used to allow you to be married in Dublin back in the day when you're a police officer. Um, my father's side. My grandfather, uh, African-American, got his MBA um, in the 50s before schools were even integrated and was a, a police officer on the south side of Chicago. So I had probably a similar crazy, you know, rigid, and we were a little reckless when we were younger, but, you know, we knew that there no. was an authority figure <laughs> like Jenny that we had to come home to, that, you know, that would lay down the hammer. So I am really excited about, you know, bringing together this group, but... Uh, up next to the stage, my friend uh, Isaac Rowe, um, go ahead and step up. Um, my good friend Isaac, again, uh, one of the original masterminds of putting all this pandemonium into a room and just like watching sparks fly. Um, so Isaac, I love chaos, Rick. <laughs> 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 we 
<laughs> love, we all we all love chaos just a little bit. You envision us loving chaos. So I right? know. I thought you Thrive. were Italian. The no, first time I met Irish. you, I'm like, oh my God, you're huge. How yeah. are you? <laughs> and like just your your complexion and stuff. And I was like, all right, this I, is gonna be good, me and me and you. But yeah, that explains it. I have Irish. been Sicilian. Um, <laughs> I have some really good Italian friends. I've been Latino. I've been Samoan. Um, I like racial ambiguity because when I'm sitting down in a business setting, nobody ever knows. I'm like, exotic. you've been everything, Rick. Yeah, they're like, let me touch your hair. You know, it's like <laughs> you're exotic looking, like blah blah blah. And I'm like, yeah, cool, whatever. Like whatever you're comfortable with, but let's do business. So, um, but Isaac's a let's do business type guy. Isaac, uh, introduce yourself, what exactly you do, and all that good stuff. Yeah, so I've been doing real estate uh, for about 10 years now. I got my license uh, in early uh, 2013 and really never looked back. I always had a passion for real estate when I was younger. Uh, I did all the normal stuff, read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that everyone does, and I got kind of hooked on it. And I read a bunch of books when I was a teenager, but it took me... Till being 28 years old to actually dive in full time in the business, and uh, I love it. I mean, I got hooked on it. I, I, you know, I really wanted to be an investor. Started as an agent uh, originally, and uh, really dove in to uh, the investment side as an agent. So I started working with in, with investors. And that's really how I got got started. Uh, but really, very quickly, I realized that I wanted to be the investor. Right? right. And I always did, but I didn't realize how quick I could do it. So within two years, I was investing. I was buying and selling. I was selling deals to investors. I was buying my own deals. And uh, once you start doing that, I mean, you can't go back, right? It's like gambling or something, right? It's like an addiction. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do feel like I'm addicted sometimes to real estate. I, um, you know, it's, it's uh, but really what's kind of happened over the years years is I've, I, it's, it's evolved into more of a marketing and sales business. We have a few employees now and houses are our product. We, we buy them and we do a number of different things with them, depending on what that means. And, you know, we always analyze every deal separately. We buy and hold, we buy and flip. We'll, we'll, uh, do light rehabs, moderate rehabs, heavy rehabs. I, I've got some Airbnbs. We sell deals to other investors. You can call that wholesaling. We double close. We do some of everything basically. Um, and that's really the, the, the short version of the story. But I, I mean, I'm hooked for life. I'll, I, I don't know if I'd ever retire. I mean, why, right? If you're doing something you love doing I agree. and you I agree. enjoy, I mean, why would you stop doing it? Maybe I'll do less of it or I'll do it from a beach somewhere or, or an Airbnb in Portugal. I don't know there you go. that I own, but I, uh, be there with you. Yeah, dude, we'll, 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 uh, buy that one together eventually, Rick, but you I, don't um, leave without us. <laughs> gonna I'm gonna not sure I'm going to let you in, Jenny. You're a fiery <laughs> Peruvian. I need <laughs> calm and yeah. peace in my, in my Airbnb. I have calm and peace. <laughs> Stewie, come on. Oh, That's, man. Uh, well, I'm not sure any of us are calm and peaceful. <laughs> There's no calm and peaceful. Kaz, Kaz is like, well, unless the Russian comes out, then forget it. <laughs> That's true. Kaz is the calmest one for mm -hmm. sure. There's yeah. no doubt about it. Wayne is, Wayne's pretty calm. Wayne is. Oh, that's true. Wayne is calm. Yeah. Where is Wayne? Which he's Wayne? In, in Wayne. He's in Texas. He's boarding mm -hmm. a plane. Yep. Oh, he's traveling. He's in okay. Texas. Oh. Good old Wayne. It's his loss. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So my my Jamaican friend. We do miss him. Yeah. Yeah. It's just oh, we just touch. You know, we're the we're United Nations of real estate investing. That's true. That's being true. Uh, in mortgages and mm -hmm. all that good stuff. So, um, so Isaac. Um, what do, uh, what is your, I guess, what is your ideal uh, clientele, um, you know, for what you do in the line, of, you know, the space of real estate? Yeah, so basically, I mean, and I, this is kind of in our sales process too, but, you know, most, most people who own a home should not sell it to an investor, right? So if you view me as I a agree. real estate investor, 95% of the market, I mean, I'm not the right fit. That's it. And that's, and I'm very honest with people about that. I mean, I, you know, I literally ask people all the time. Honest. Yeah, I ask people all the time, like, why would you sell me your house, right? I'm not going to pay you what it's worth. So why would you sell it to me? And if you don't have a reason to sell it to me, you're not going to. Right. So if you don't have a, some kind of reason or something wrong, basically, to where you can't go to the normal market with Jenny or Kaz and list it, uh, why would you work with me? And, and that's a very honest question. I love that question because it just either brings out the fact that they should sell it to me or they shouldn't sell it to me. Either one is fine. I don't want to waste their time or my time. Oh, I want to figure out if it's something that is a nice fit and it makes sense for them. It's, it's a home run, right? Now, for the people it is a fit for, uh, it makes a lot of sense and it ends up being a win-win situation. We can give them a very solid number. We make the transaction extremely easy for them. It's really about time and convenience. And then price matters, of course, but I'm an investor. I have to make money. Or I'm not embarrassed that I have a business and I have to make money in my mm -hmm. business. Uh, and I think people know that. People aren't dumb. Uh, and I think a lot of investors do it the wrong way 
state where they try to beat people up or try to convince them somehow that they should sell their house at a lower price when they shouldn't, when the real approach is like, hey, you know, what's going on with your life? What, you know, what, what's important to you and what do you need to see happen here? If the house needs a lot of work and they don't have the money to do the work, uh, then they should probably sell it to me. If they do have the money to do the work and they want to do the work, then they should do that. They'll get more money for the house, right? If it's a hoarder house, if it's a probate situation, state situation, divorce situation, there's all kinds of life stuff that happens to people where money is no longer the most important thing in that moment to them, right? And they get to make that decision, not me. I you're think right. that's a great point too, Isaac. Like you're you're not the person that like a normal listing wants to go to. You know, like that is more like a meek has. Well, not her because she's multifamily now. She she quit the, she quit the resi business. But that is a great point that like you know like a normal person just wants to list their house. Like that's not what you're doing. You are doing like maybe somebody had like water damage in the basement and like they just don't want to deal with it. Yep. You know, or there's like some major like issues with it, but uh, not foundational. That's what you told me, right? You're not a huge fan of that. Basically. Well, I'll do foundation stuff too. It just depends on what's going on. So we'll we'll buy anything and we can really solve any problem. But it has to be, I mean, we of course analyze every deal individually. For us, it's just it's just a spreadsheet with numbers on it. It's not emotional, right? Either makes sense for us or it doesn't. If it doesn't make sense for us, here's a realtor, a friend of mine, Jenny, who can list your house for you, which we do refer to a lot of listings as well because uh, we get a lot of leads that come in from people who are interested in selling their home. And uh, to be honest, most of those people don't sell their home to us. So, and I really try to disqualify people that call us, not qualify them. Yeah. So, yeah. We have, our sales process is the opposite of what most people would do. Of what I would be doing. Yes. Yeah. You would be, t- <laughs> yeah. I'm the best. Here's right. why I'm so awesome. Right. You well, know, I blah, love blah. the emotional <laughs> side, is kind of what I love about it. You yeah. know, like, That's you what I hate like about Jenny, stop being so emotional. <laughs> I know. We're not, we don't have yeah. a lot in common. You know? No, we're, we we're, don't. <laughs> I know. You're, we're just here. Right? We're, yeah. yeah. I'm well, going to stop talking to you. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a, and that's a unique thing that people have to balance even on the mortgage space. You know, my LOs battle this sometimes is, Sometimes you got to know from when to switch from being somebody's best friend to the parent and saying yeah. this is how it's going to go. Yeah, you know? sure. And again, not to. The, the, this isn't. I'm not going to go to my attorney and and tell him how to you know create uh, you know um, operational whatever agreement or whatever. And I'm also not going to go to my dentist and tell him how to pull out a, a root canal. Sure. So people need to have the same respect for people in our space. You know, we're the professional. Listen to what we have to tell you because we're going to try to direct you in the right direction. Isaac's going to say, okay, I'm here to buy a property at discount and then find an investor for it um, to be able to sell it. Whereas like a Jenny Eric has is looking for that first time home buyer that may actually be interested in buying investment properties. But a lot of times they run into issues if it's an off market property, or I don't want to say off market, you know, it's a no, no word, I guess. But if it's a wholesale deal, a lot of times it's harder for people to try to find financing for. So you're, you know, we're all in completely different spaces, but I guess the connective tissue obviously is real estate. So, sure. but all good stuff. Uh, now, what areas do you serve? Because a lot of people ask us, like, as loan officers, do you serve Summit County? I'm like, yeah, when you're licensed in, <laughs> yeah. you know, mortgages, you're in the full state. So. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's that's a good question, Rick. Most uh, investors are very area specific. So they like Garfield Heights and Maple Heights. So they like the west side of Cleveland or they like the east side of Cleveland. You know, my model has always been very different, which is, I think, part of what's allowed me to really thrive in the business and, and grow. Uh, through the good times and the bad times um, is we're all over Northeast Ohio. So we're, you know, I I just bought a house in Youngstown. We're closing on one in Mansfield next week or the week after. Um, I'm doing properties in Geauga County, Lake County, um, Cuyahoga County, Lorain County, Sandusky, uh, Medina. You know, we're all over the place. We're flipping five to 10 houses at a time ourselves directly. We sell flips to other investors. We, We buy rentals everywhere. So yeah, I mean, there's really, you know, anywhere within an hour and a half of Cleveland for the most part. You're halfway we'll, we'll to go. Columbus. But yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't really go further south than Mansfield generally. But, um, but yeah. So what if somebody was interested, you know, this is a little bit off topic, but like what if somebody was interested in getting, um, investing in real estate, what would be like your piece of advice to them to starting into the investment space? Because it's way different than obviously, you know, first time home buying. Yeah, I mean, I always... Uh, 
tell people, you know, initially, I try to understand their life and what's going on. So a lot of people want to invest in real estate. They have maybe a decent paying job. They have an extra 20, 30 grand laying around. They want to do something with it, right? right. And they think, oh, I'm going to flip a house and make 30 grand. Well, that's a lot easier said than done. I, most people easier. who try to flip their first house lose money or break even. The market has been so hot the last few years that it's bailed out a lot of people who did it wrong. And just to give an example, I, I, had, a, I had a good friend of mine who was extremely successful in business who sold multi-million dollar companies and has done all kinds of stuff. And he got into the house flip, um, flipping business for his son to try to get his son started. And he told me, he's like, Isaac, flipping houses is a really hard business. Right. And uh, so I think it's, it does have to be viewed as a business. So if you're looking to fix and flip, my advice is be very, very careful. Uh, do very light cosmetic rehabs. It's very easy to underbid jobs, to work with contractors who aren't reliable, to have them take money from you. I mean, I could spend a whole two hour show talking about how I was going to say, I, I, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean. um, so I, I would highly recommend if you are somebody who's not full time in the business and you're just on the side wanting to invest, then buy a rental property that is in pretty good shape and have a management company that is, is decent and there are some decent ones um, that can do some light rehab for you and manage it for you and just put it in your retirement portfolio. If you want to get into business full time and make a living at it, you know, I recommend to people all the time, get your license and learn that way first. You can make money. It's, it's a lot less risky. You will learn a ton that way. But if you have a really high paying job and, you're, and, and, and you want to just invest in real estate, I think buy and hold on a, on a nicer area is the smartest way to go, in my opinion. Yeah. Something I learned from from Isaac is the trust but verify. Yeah, like I'll never for, like verify. you told us your story and you know and like you said like you know, you've gotten burned before and I think people just think like oh I'll call a contractor and the contractor will come yeah. and do it and then and then it's that they easy, don't right? it's like well, well, it's, like, it's like a magic trick <laughs> right yeah. and yeah. so I just that I've taken that from you you know that's just something that I mean all of you have given me bits and pieces of things but that's something I'm always like okay wait I have to make sure I'm trusting these people they come or from a referral or like you know that yeah. they work with someone. It's not just like you, you know, you call somebody up and you're like, all right, come do this. Uh, I've even had referrals <laughs> steal from me before. So it's just, you have to need, you know, I try to not pay anything up front. I want a full scope of work with every single line item itemized and detailed. Yeah. I need pictures. If they want to get paid every week, I need pictures or video showing What's exactly done? what they did that matches the invoice. Like I learned the hard way to be super detailed because I'm not really a detailed person. I don't like details. They like annoy me. I just want to put deals together. I want to go have lunch with Rick <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just like to hang out with people and network and that's part of what makes the business run. But I, I don't, I don't really like that side of the business. Yeah. So, no detail. Yeah. Yeah. And a, a lot of what Isaac's touching on is a lot of these quote unquote gurus, they like to act like as if, you know, they, they've had nothing but wins the whole time. But the difference between them and our group is we actually talk about the failures. Like, you know, yeah. a noob came in, was talking about how he failed, you know, went through bankruptcy, et cetera, rebuilt his entire portfolio to where it's at. You know, we really focus in on all the things that we did wrong so that people can learn from our mistakes. And a lot of these gurus just sell, you know, this thousand dollar dream, huge upswing potential, minimal downside, you know, straight out of Wolf of Wall Street. And a lot of those guys don't even actually hold properties themselves, which is always the funny part to me because I know everybody's dirty laundry, but that's neither here nor there. Is that, um, that we're here to do? That's a, that's a n whole <laughs> nother, podcast. yeah, uh, there's, there's a lot of dirty laundry out here. Um, and know your JV partner, by the way. So. Um, True. Joint venture partner, which is somebody who would, if you wanted to get into real estate, let's say you didn't have the down payment or the assets, you could joint venture with somebody that actually has it if you identify the property. The downside to that, again, is you want skin in the game. Now, what we're seeing in the market is market is in turmoil, right? Like it's all over the place, like banks are failing, et cetera, et cetera. Where do I put my money? What everybody does here, you put it in real estate and you yep. sit it there. So it's the only guaranteed appreciating asset for the rest of your life. And again, the wealth gap, especially as a minority man, the wealth gap comes from real estate. That's it. Yeah. That's the pun. That's the punchline. There's nothing else to look around. Like if you want to start building wealth for yourself, stop talking yourself out of market rates and all that stuff and looking for interest rates that are unsustainable, like get into the real estate now. Um, we call it um, marry the house, date the rate. So didn't mean to go off on a tangent there, but you know, that's something I'm very like You usually do. Yeah, I do. It's, there's, there's a lot of mania going on in my head. In case, no, I'm just kidding. I'm pretty sane, kind of. Uh, 
So, uh, Isaac, uh, why would a homeowner want to sell their house um, to you and your company? Yeah, and I, and I touched on this earlier, but it's it's a it's a really important question to kind of verify. I mean, you know, and I, I ask people, you know, I, I've I've some people talk to me and call me, and and uh, and we've done about five hundred transactions in the last ten years. So so we've done a lot of deals, and Thanks, I will, I will tell you that two of them were people who I was like, why are they selling me this house? The other 400 plus were like, obviously, why they're selling me the home. I had one person sell me their home that they could have sold for 50 grand more just by listing it the same day because they did not want their neighbors to know that they were moving. They were very private. They had a lot of money. They didn't care about the money. And I literally said to them when I said, I'm like, why are you selling me this house? They're like, we don't really want to talk about that. When you come to our home, do not have any mark, you know, no, no, no uh, logos, no nothing. Uh, and it was Oops. a weird, so there's very weird situations where somebody will sell us a home when they really shouldn't. Generally speaking, there is a major problem that needs to be solved. One of the big cl clients of ours are uh, landlords who have mismanaged properties, who have tenant issues. Uh, they don't want to deal with evictions. The tenant destroyed the house and they just don't want to deal with it. They're just done. They're just fed up. We do a lot of business with tired landlords because the other people think people don't realize about being a landlord is that's a business. You have to manage it. You can't just buy a house, rent it, and then la di da go on your way. It's a business. It's passive. Yeah, there's no such not thing as really. passive. Not really. Is life passive, Rick? There's nothing in life that's passive. I mean, ever. Um, so you'll take it over with tenants living in it. Uh, yes, 100%. We're we're uh, we're buying two right now uh, with tenants in them. So one has a squatter actually, and then one is a tenant. So when we'll we have an attorney, we will deal with the eviction, um, and then we'll sell it uh, once it's the problem is solved. So we deal with the problem. I bought a house uh, in Cam's Corner uh, where that was had so much stuff in it that we couldn't even see the home. Well, we just like, hey, we'll buy it. We we spent seven or eight thousand dollars cleaning the house out, and it turned out the person loved books, so the clean out was a pain. It was a major pain. But this is but the the point is that it's it is always a problem. There's a problem we solve, and they have something going on in their life that is a means that they should sell to somebody who is going to solve that problem for them. If things are peaceful and the house is in great shape and they're not in a rush and they can and they're willing to go through the process of a normal sale with inspections and appraisals and banks and and all that stuff, then that's what they should do. And that leads me to my second point. Um, why wouldn't somebody sell their house to you? Yeah, and this is and this is a conversation I love to have, and, and uh, I, I you know I briefly mentioned this, but like you know I literally tell people like I'm not sure you're talking to the right person. <laughs> like you know I like I'd love to buy your home. I'm at you know, um, but there's no reason why you, unless unless I'm missing something. There's no compelling reason why you would sell me your house. Right, and that's a great question to kind of bring people into the truth, right? Because really, sales work because um, really what happens is a sales company. So sales work is uh, in my opinion is shifting away from the, the, the used car salesman putting pressure on everybody and trying to yes, trying the worst into this, measurable. you know, you know, hey, let's see if we're the right fit for you. We might not be. Uh, and I love saying that. Like, people are worse. Right, right. It's more, it's more honest business now. Yeah, yeah, there's no reason not to be. Honesty pays, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, being straightforward much. and real people pays, especially yeah. in our business, because a lot of investors are shady. And, yeah. and they, 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 they lie to people, and they make stuff up, and they, they put do. pressure on people. And we've all been in the business long enough to have dealt with that. Yeah, so. yeah no, I'm literally just going through that with a... Another, you know, lowly person in the mortgage arena that, you know, just started spreading stuff about us for one reason, because they looked at us competition, like, and I'm just like, I'm friends with everybody, like, yeah, you know, why, uh -huh. why even do that? And same thing happens with investors, you know, but people are like, yeah, such and such, stay out of the rumor mill, because it just causes lawsuits. This is the best thing I can tell everybody, like, I don't say anything about anybody, I keep it above board. Yeah. Do upfront business. One thing that Isaac really said to me that stood out to me is, you know, I was with a group of investors and I felt that I couldn't co-sign some of the stuff that they were doing and or present, you know, the houses they were present, you know, doing presentations on. And I feel like generally speaking, we're all collectively like that, especially even down to the sponsors that um, sponsor our events. They're people we do business with. Yeah. And honestly, we argue over them. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> we argue <laughs> We are, it's just we managing are. all the big personalities in the yeah. room, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. are friends with everybody, though, right? I, I, yeah, I have are. no beefs, which is crazy when a beef actually comes out of nowhere, because I'm like, do you guys know who I am? Like, I yeah. don't have beef with anybody. Like, 
I'm cool, whatever. You are um, cool, Rick. You are cool. You're super cool. I, the hat and the you're sunglasses. The coolest out of all of us, I think. I try. I got my <laughs> Vegas uh, sunglasses on and all that good stuff. So, are we going to Vegas after this? Is that uh, what's up? We can go to Vegas. If you like. I mean, that's, Don't tempt me with a good time, Rick. Yeah, my uh, second home. Am uh, I allowed to go there with you guys? At least I'm not so sure about not that. At the beach. Yeah. I feel like Jenny would be a good fit. I feel to like Vegas. Vegas might be a good fit. Vegas. For me. I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see I'm not coming home. <laughs> <laughs> just, just stay in there, huh? Just, yeah, I'm gonna, moving in. You're not going to find me. I'm just going to be somewhere. <laughs> How's the Mo real estate? Move into the industry. Disappear. You're going to be gone. It's estate. over. Oh, well, we got to replace Jenny. The group's going to fall apart without her, oh. so we, we really can't can't replace you. Right. Yeah, don't don't I'm tell sure. her, but she can't leave because without her, this event would not be happening. Oh, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. It would literally fall apart. So... For those that don't know, again, going forward, the uh, focus of uh, Equity Equals Freedom, as well as our partnership with uh, WOBL, is to really inform um, consumers um, from all things, um, from investing to real estate, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, everybody on here is a licensed professional. Again, always do your due diligence. But when it comes to real estate and real estate investing, um, we cover pretty much you know every every part here. So. Uh, shout out to uh, Iconic Partners, EXP Realty, Easy Sales Team. Uh, shout out to my guy, uh, Greg and Mike, really good guys over there at KW Citywide. Um, Heartwise, uh, my good friend Isaac's uh, business, as well as Equity Capital Mortgage Group. You can find us uh, at Equity CMG um, on Instagram. Uh, Jenny, uh, it's at Jenny, J E N N Y. What's your uh, G E N N A R O? I didn't underscore. want to mess that up. Okay. Underscore. You're good. And it's heartwiseohio.com if you want to see our uh, TV ad and see and learn, learn more about our company. There we go. And don't forget Iconic uh, Icon Co work for realtors. Uh, great space to go to, great space to have events. You guys do that for free, right? Free. Yeah, so real estate agents can actually use Icon Cowork for free. Any brokerage, I mean, AXP, again, is just super welcoming. So, um, yeah, any agent that's looking for an office space in Lakewood and just needs to kind of come work, um, you can email us at hello at iconcowork.com. You can find us on Instagram at um, Icon Cowork and message me. I handle our social, so I will... Be more than welcome to talk, show you around. All right. And we drink plenty of beer at two bucks. So, uh, <laughs> two bucks in Lakewood and any two bucks. Shout out to Kaz, the entrepreneurial machine. Yeah. Um, first Thursday. Yes. First Thursday of every month, uh, Investor Source CLE, Investor Source CLE on all platforms. And on that note, we are going to go ahead and sign off. Lorraine Connie, we appreciate you for allowing us to come put all this pandemonium into one room and just teach you all about real estate. So, Sign off until the third Wednesday of next month. The proceeding was a paid informational program.